Good health to all from Rexall. It's the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist with a welcome from all 10,000 of us. The 10,000 independent druggists who have added the word Rexall to our own store names and placed the famous orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows. We've done that because we believe in the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company and we confidently recommend them to our customers. There's Rexall's Milk of Magnesia, for example. The Milk of Magnesia that's so mild, so creamy smooth, and free from unpleasant earthy taste, even children can taste the difference. Quality like that of Rexall Milk of Magnesia is what we family druggists are talking about when we tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Like a lot of men, Phil hates to answer correspondence. Alice is constantly after him to take care of his mail, and today she's finally forced him to sit down and read some of his accumulated letters. Phil, you ought to be ashamed the way you neglect your mail. Some of these letters have been here for years, not even opened. Don't exaggerate. I open my mail as soon as I get it. You do, huh? Here's one from Washington marked Official Business. Let me see that. Greetings, you are hereby ordered to report to your induction center. <laughs> I answered this one. I was in the Navy in 1943. This one's from 1917. <laughs> oh, that must be for Dad. <laughs> All these letters aren't for me. Here's one for you. What does it say? Well, let me see. Oh, it's from the Bank of America, and it says... Dear Miss Fay, we appreciate your daily deposits, but please stop already. You're overcrowding our vault. <laughs> Honey, I'm a busy man. Do I have to go through all this stuff? Oh, you won't have to today. I put in an ad in this morning's paper for a secretary for you. Well, I don't need a... Secretary? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I could use one of them cute little gals to kind of run... Hold it, Wonga. <laughs> That's not what you're getting. I advertise for a man secretary. A man secretary? Pull yourself together, Hilda. <laughs> you're making noises like a wife now. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Don't you trust me? Oh, of course I do. If you insist on a woman secretary, it's okay with me. I'll get you a sweet, charming, middle-aged spinster. That ain't gonna do it. <laughs> Look, I want a young girl, my own age. <laughs> a young girl your age? Let's face it, Curly, there ain't no such animal. <laughs> Besides, I've practically hired a man already. And Mr. Sweeney called this morning. He sounded very efficient. I told him to come over for an interview. But, honey, a girl can be just as efficient. If you think I'm going to take an old man when I Hiya, can... Hiya, Curly. Oh, hello, Frankie. Hey, good morning. I'm glad you're here. Look, you can settle an argument huh? for me. Now, if you were hiring a secretary and you had a choice between an efficient old man or a pretty young girl, which would you choose? Well, that's not a choice. That's just a stupid question. <laughs> Now, you see, Alice, Frankie agrees with me Of course Guy would be a fool to choose a pretty young girl When he can get an efficient old man <laughs> <laughs> Business efficiency is the prime requisite In the administration of the customary protocol <laughs> Well, if I'd have known you were coming I'd have baked a dictionary <laughs> What's all the secretary talk about? Who needs one? Well, Alice feels that I need one because 
I can't answer my mail. Why hire a secretary? Just go to night school and learn how to write. <laughs> I know how to write. Write me something. All right. <laughs> now look, Alice. Let me tell you something, young lady. I happen to be the boss of this house, and I've decided that I don't want a male secretary. I'm hiring a girl, and that's final. I'm putting my foot down. Well, I'm glad you're putting it down. You look awfully silly standing there on one foot. <laughs> Quiet, please. Excuse me, I have an errand to do. I have to go next door and borrow a cup of axle grease. I'll see you later. Alice, you're not telling me what I'm... Cup of axle grease? <laughs> Guess she ran out of Crisco <laughs> Alice, come back here Yes? What kind of an exit line was that? Oh, I'm sorry, dear I, I guess I've been standing out in the rain too long What rain? The rain from the song of the same name Oh, you little trickster, you <laughs> Let us cuddle in the rain, hit a patters on the pane, and wear alone a chance to while away a dreamy afternoon, a lovely peaceful afternoon. No one can see us. Rain, it's so cozy in the rain. There's no reason to complain at ease with you to hold his hand and then it's ten to one you'll kiss him in the rain, rain, rain. Let us cuddle in the rain, in a patter on the pain. While away A dreamy afternoon A lovely peaceful afternoon No one can see us rain. Oh, it's so cozy in the rain There's no reason to complain It's she's with you To hold his hand And then In the rain, rain, rain. Well, excuse me while I go next door. And don't forget, Phil, you're not having a girl secretary. You're having a man. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Assert yourself. If you don't want a male secretary, don't hire one. You're right, Remley. I won't hire a man. Uh-oh. That's probably the guy now. Let's give it to him. Let's get rid of him. <laughs> I think we can discourage him. Oh, how do you do? My name is Robert Q. Sweeney. I'm here for the job. What job? Well, the one you told me about on the phone, Mrs. Harris. <laughs> oh, this boy's off to a great start. <laughs> I got news for you, kid. I'm Mr. Harris. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. With these new short haircuts women have, it's hard to tell. <laughs> I, I, I get, I get kind of confused. I can understand that. A very embarrassing thing happened to me a few months back. I went with a girl for two weeks, and it wasn't until I kissed her that I found out it was her father. <laughs> that must have been very disappointing. Yeah. What I thought was hot lips turned out to be a cheap cigar. <laughs> Righto. All right, Remley, you can drop the net now. So long, Sweeney. Don't forget to say hello to the governor. <laughs> uh, keep in touch with us, Sweeney. If you ever manage to get an arm loose, drop us a line. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Sweeney. Well, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
minute. Mrs. Harris said she wanted to interview me about the job, and I'm not going to budge until I talk to her. Hey, Curling, we'd better interview this guy and get him out of here fast before Alice sees him. Yeah, she'll probably think he's cute. <laughs> uh, Sweeney, uh, on second thought, we'll uh, interview you. After all, you'll be working for our firm. What firm? What firm? Harrison Remley Incorporated, the world's largest manufacturers of fireproof mustache cups. <laughs> and stainless steel codfish balls. Fireproof mustache cups? I never heard of anything like that. Stainless steel codfish balls you heard of, huh? <laughs> gonna love our new line, ball-bearing flapjacks. <laughs> By the way, Mr. Remley, how are our flapjacks doing lately? Great. They're selling like hotcakes. <laughs> That's a pretty lousy joke. <laughs> if you fellas don't mind, I'd rather talk to Mrs. Harris. Did that man show up for the dog Oh, Remy, quick. Shove him in that clothes closet. Shove him in there till I get rid of Alice. Yeah, okay. If you want to talk to Mrs. Harris, Miss Sweeney, just step in this other room for a minute. Right this way. boy. Oh, oh, ah. <laughs> man, we got him in that closet just in time. Yeah. Well, I, I thought I heard a strange voice out here. Did that man show up for the job yet? You don't see him, do you? Well... When he does show up, tell him to wait for me. I'm going next door to borrow a glass of paint thinner. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, honey, I'll catch you when he... <laughs> glass of paint thinner? First it was axle grease, and now it's paint thinner. Remley, what do you suppose she has in mind? I don't know. But I ain't gonna stay for dinner. <laughs> Look, do me a favor, will you? Now, while she's gone, let's get Sweeney out of that clothes closet and get rid of him. Will you help? Uh, hey, Sweeney! Sweeney, you can come on out now. Ah, that's a nice room in there. <laughs> Doesn't get much sun, but it's cozy. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Harris, uh, I hope you don't think I'm a pig, but, but while I was waiting in there, I practically finished that whole box of mentholated bonbons. <laughs> mentholated bon... Remley's been eating the mothballs. <laughs> What'll we do? Let him finish them. We'll get him a job breathing on overcoats. <laughs> There's a scarcity of men with mothball All breath. right, all right. I'm all up with you now. That's fine. How are we going to get rid of this guy? Frighten him. How? Sing at him. That ought to scare the mothballs out of him. <laughs> Give me that old time religion, that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It was good for Paul and Silas. Good for Paul and Silas. It was good for Paul and Silas, and it's good enough for me. Show me that place by the river. That place by the river. Show me that place by the river on Jordan's sunny shore. What saved Daniel from the lions? Saved Daniel from the lions. What helped Daniel with the lions? Deacon Star and telling me. Well, it was that old time religion. That old time religion. Yes, that old-time religion, and it's good enough for me. It helped Daniel with the lions, it helped to set him free. Well, if it's good enough for Danny, then it's good enough for me. So give me that old-time religion, religion, old-time religion. Give me that old-time religion, it's good enough for me. I'll be listening for Gabriel, listening for Gabriel. I'll be listening for Gabriel to blow on Judgment Day. What helped David with Goliath? Help David with Goliath. What help David slay Goliath? What was it set him free? Well, that old time religion, religion, old time religion, yes, that old time religion, it's good enough for me. It helped David with Goliath, it helped to set him free. And if it's good enough for Davy, then it's good enough for me. Give me that old time religion, religion, old time religion, religion, old time religion, it's good enough for me. Now what rescued Brother Jonah? What rescued Brother Jonah? What was it saved old Jonah from the belly of the whale? It 
was that old-time religion, religion, old-time religion. Yes, that old-time religion, it's never known to fail. It saved Jonah from the whale, yes, it helped to set it free. And if it's good enough for Joni, then it's good enough for me. So give me that old-time religion, religion, old-time religion, religion, old-time religion. It's good enough for me. Well, it's that old-time religion, religion, old-time religion, religion, old-time religion. It's good enough for me. I want that old-time religion, that old-time religion. Give me that old-time religion. It's good enough for me. Charlie, he's still here. <laughs> I guess he didn't hear you. <laughs> oh, yes, I picked him up on my hearing aid. You came through splendidly, Mr. Harris. Yes, Mr. Harris has a high hooper on the sonotone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, look, Sweeney, I don't want to... Oh, no, there's the bell. That's probably some other guy answering the ad. Frankie, I'll sneak Sweeney out the back and you answer the front door. Hurry up. Yeah, hurry. Come on, Sweeney. We're going bye-bye. <laughs> oh, good. Hey, can we go to the pony ride? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, remember, Remley, if yeah. anybody comes after that job, get rid of him, because I don't want no secretary. Yeah, okay, Curly. I'll brush him off fast. I'm coming. I'm sorry, but we can't use you. We don't need no secretary. Not even me. Well, <laughs> you can throw away my guitar, Mother. I found something better to hold on my lap. <laughs> what can I do for you, honey? Well, I'm here in answer to the ad Mrs. Harris had in the paper for a secretary. Mrs. Harris wants a man. Who doesn't? <laughs> You intrigue me, miss. <laughs> Come on in. Oh, thank you. I know the ad called for a man, but, well, I thought I might get the job because I'm a very competent secretary. Any fool can see that. <laughs> now then. <laughs> What is your name, dear? Clyde. Clyde? <laughs> uh, that, that, that's my last name. My first name is Myrtle. Do you have any references? Oh, I'm afraid not. All I have is a few pictures of me in a bathing suit. Here you are. Oh, honey, that won't do any good. I can't tell from these if you... <laughs> What lovely references. <laughs> do, you, do you think I'll qualify for the job? I'm sure you will. But let's not be hasty. Being a cautious businessman, I'll have to give you the secretary aptitude test. <laughs> What's that? When I blow this whistle, you start running around that desk. <laughs> the test. I run around after you, and if you get winded before I do, you get the job. <laughs> On your mark, get set. Oh, no, you're being silly. If you were to chase me around that desk, I wouldn't run away. <laughs> you wouldn't? <laughs> <laughs> What would you do? Well, you see this hat pin? Yeah. Well, I'm not wearing a hat, and I'd have to put it someplace. <laughs> You're fighting me. <laughs> Do I get the job? Of course you do, my dear. I'm sure things well, will work. Well, I got rid of Sweeney, okay? Good, good. Oh, now, man. come on in and meet your new secretary. Thank you. I told you I don't want no secretary. But I'll be such a big help to I you. I don't care. I don't need your help. <laughs> <laughs> Boeing. <laughs> hey, Remley, what's all this? Uh, <laughs> 
This is the secretary Alice advertised for. I don't think this is what Alice had in mind. <laughs> But she's a good secretary I don't care Get Luella lap warmer out of here <laughs> Now, Curly, you're not being fair Just because this girl happens to be pretty Doesn't mean she isn't capable You should see this kid's references <laughs> Please, gentlemen, don't fight over me If you don't want me, I'll leave I don't know where I'll go or what I'll do but I guess nobody cares. <laughs> oh, now, now, miss, please don't do that. I... <laughs> this kid cries pretty good. <laughs> Let me have just a little more of that, honey. To... <laughs> She's living it up now, isn't she? <laughs> Good news for you. You don't have to cry, kid. Uh, now... Please stop bawling because I've got news for you. You can have the job. I can? Oh, you're a darling. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> well, you're the nicest old man I've ever I... met. <laughs> what do you mean, old man? I'm just a you. In fact, it was only last week that Mother bought me my first pair of long pants. <laughs> Do you like them? <laughs> Very much. They cover your varicose veins now. Uh, <laughs> uh, you're so nice to give me the job, and well, I'd like to show my appreciation. May I kiss your cheek? Would it make you happy, my dear? <laughs> I just have to show my appreciation. There. Hey, I find the groceries and ah ha ha ha! <laughs> what have we here? Now wait a minute, Julia. <laughs> Ain't this a touchy little scene that I can make a quick buck on if I shout to the right gossip column? <laughs> now, Julius, I tell you, there's nothing wrong Quiet. with this. I can see the headline now. What pretty young thing was found in the arms of what broken down band leader who's a mission to fill her? Now, what are you talking about? I ain't done nothing. Nothing, he says. I saw the whole thing with my own prejudiced little eye. <laughs> <laughs> this sweet young thing came to your door selling Girl Scout cookies. Whereupon you took her in your arms and forced your burning kisses on her unwilling lips. What cooking? <laughs> All I did was hire as my secretary, and she was so grateful that she gave me a little kiss on the cheek. I like my version better. <laughs> it's got more reader impact, more social significance, and a higher retail value. The whole thing. <laughs> oh, Julius, the whole thing is innocent. What are you trying to do, kid? Start trouble? Yeah. <laughs> well, it won't work. Alice ain't going to believe no stories you tell her. She has implicit trust in me. And justly so, because in our eight years of marriage, I can safely say that we have been married eight years. <laughs> I, I don't want to cause trouble. Perhaps I'd better leave. Stay where you are, my pet. I won't hesitate to introduce you to Mrs. Harris, because my little woman ain't got a jealous bone in her body. <laughs> and I assure you now, that... did Mrs. Sweeney arrive yet in answer to her? Well, who is this? Oh, this? Oh, darling, uh, I want you to meet Julius Abruzio. He's the new grocery boy. <laughs> Mr. Abruzio, this is my wife, Mrs. Harris. She's been with me for some time now. I know, I know who he is. Who is that? That? Oh, that's Frankie Remley. Okay. Phil Harris, who is this? I'm running out of people. <laughs> I think she's got you cornered, Curly. Not yet. Darling... I want you to meet my new secretary, Mr. Sweeney. This guy never gives up. <laughs> How do you do, Mrs. Harris? But my name isn't Sweeney. It's Clyde. That's right, honey. You see, it was Clyde. <laughs> I thought maybe, honey, that a girl secretary would be better. The least we can do is to give the, give the girl a chance. Well, I'm fair-minded. If you want the job, Miss Clyde... You can have it. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Harris. When do I start and what are my duties? Oh, it's a very easy job. 
The hours are from 8 in the morning until 12 midnight, seven days a week. You get 20 minutes for lunch once a week. You also get every other Christmas off, and if there's any overtime work to be done, you'll have to do it on your own time. <laughs> any questions? <laughs> How about money? Oh, no, thanks. You'll be doing enough for us already. <laughs> A little woman don't have a jealous bone in her body, eh, Curly? Her bones are very unjealous. They just happen to be covered with jealous fat. <laughs> Alice, you're not being fair to this little girl. No, she's a very efficient secretary. Frankie says she has wonderful references. Go ahead, Miss Clyde. Show my wife your references. <laughs> that ain't gonna help, Curly. <laughs> well, I guess I'm not wanted around here, so I'll leave. Thank you, and... Goodbye. Clyde, dear, don't go. Don't leave me just when we're beginning to know each other. I'm sorry, but I'm going. Well, at least leave me something to remember you by, a little trinket, a lock of your hair, or better yet, have your references blown up and send me three copies. <laughs> She's gone. Poor kid's feelings were hurt, certainly. Alice, you were horrid. Poor child's on the verge of tears. She needed this job, and that must be her again. She probably hasn't got car fare home, and I'm going to give it to her. Here's a dollar, honey. Take a cab home. I'll need two fifty, dear. I live in Glendale. <laughs> what are you doing back here, Sweeney? Well, I left my cap in that other room. Oh, are you the Mr. Sweeney I spoke to on the phone? Oh, you must be Mrs. Harris. I hope you'll give me that job. I'm a very good secretary. I've had four years of college, two years of business school, and I've held several very important jobs. You're just what we're looking for, Mr. Sweeney. You're hired. Alice, Alice, just... Please, we can't hire him. He's a nut. He eats mothballs, and for three months he was engaged to his girlfriend's father. <laughs> Bill, stop making things up. Mr. Sweeney, Mr. Sweeney, report for work tomorrow morning. Oh, you won't regret hiring me, Mrs. Harris. I'm a peachy typist, and I'm alert and keen and always on my toes. <laughs> Goodbye. See you tomorrow, Mr. Sweeney. Oh, oh, by the way, I almost forgot something very important. How is your shorthand? Oh, it's growing nicely, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, see you bright and early. Good night, tell you. Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. Right now, here's your Rexall family druggist. Last week, a customer said to me... I wish I knew some way to be sure I'm getting enough vitamins. Some way that's easy. Yes, and inexpensive, too. Why, ma'am, millions of people know how to do that. They take Plenamins, Rexall's popular multivitamin capsules. Plenamins cost only a few pennies a day, and yet they give you more than your daily minimum requirement of every vitamin for which such requirements have been established. Plus valuable liver concentrate and iron. And that's not me talking, ma'am. That's an ironclad guarantee from Rexall scientists. But just how are they able to guarantee that? Because they measure the vitamin content of plenamins with scientific accuracy. Take vitamin C, for example. A plenamins capsule is dissolved in solution, and then a bluish dye is added in minute quantities and very, very slowly. The dye combines with the vitamin C in the capsule and loses its color. Now, this is continued until the dye becomes, uh, begins to overcome the vitamin C and slightly color the solution. Thus, the amount of dye the solution has absorbed becomes an accurate measurement of the amount of vitamin C in the capsule. No wonder you family druggists sound so confident when you tell us... You can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall? Well, it's more than a slogan. It's a fact. Good health to all from Rexall. We're a little late, so good night, everyone, and thanks. Next, Sam Spade, then Doug Fairbanks on Theater Guild on NBC.